Um, as the introduction said, uh, my name is Fredondo Jermaine Jackson. Um, I was born here in America's Georgia, grew up in Plains and other parts of the area, and um, Reverend Jose Water took me under at Lebanon Baptist Church. I am the grandson of Deacon Arzell Jackson and Miss Annie Ruth Jackson of Plains, Georgia. And most people know who my relatives are, and actually my cousin and Mr. Smith, Pastor Smith, there in the back. Um, I was given this podium today to just a couple of minutes to talk about a campaign that I've been organizing with the Fuller Center for Housing called Faith in Action. Uh, the basic premise is our model is don't just go to church to be the church. Um, the Fuller Center for Housing prides itself on being an assistant to ministries throughout the globe and throughout Sumter County. This initiative comes together by bringing together the local Fuller Center affiliate with the local Habitat for Humanity affiliate because we both understand that every child deserves a simple and decent home to live in, to sleep in, to rest their heads in. But we also know that the legacy of Miller Fuller was grounded in the principles and philosophies that you find within the church. Because he understood that the church community does a great job of teaching our children how they should go out into the community, educating our children how to be true examples of people of faith, also being a living example himself of how to allow the faith community to be the central part of organizing Habitat for Humanity. Miller Fat passed away February of last year, 2009. We have a charge as organizations to continue his legacy, but it cannot continue unless we have a true partnership with the faith community. And that's why we're calling it faith in action, because we all know what it says in the book of James about faith without works is dead. So we understand the philosophy of having the church community be behind us as we move forward doing this work. Because when we say faith in action, don't just go to church, be the church, it's not designed to say take people away from different congregations. That's not our mission. Our mission is to empower your congregation to do something beyond the time they're spending with you. To do something in the community to be the fit and show some sort of initiative to transform our neighborhood. Like it's, I have a flyer that I will pass out, but what it says is a courageous campaign to transform lives, to transform communities, to help the church heal the world. We want to encourage each and every one of us to be living disciples of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to help out those that are less fortunate. Here in Sumter County, we have multiple needs. Our focus for this particular weekend is on home repair. We have about 10 homes that we've identified through Habitat New Horizons, the Fuller Center for Housing, and Cornelia Farm. We're trying to organize the church community to come out and supply volunteers for us to do service projects. They will begin 8 o'clock in the morning. We start every morning off. So for those pastors that are here, we're looking for people to lead us in devotion at the Fuller Center for Housing, Monday through Friday. 8 a.m. to about 8.30, morning devotions. But we start all of our projects off with some sort of devotion. And then from there, we're going to do wheelchair ramps. We're going to install windows. We're going to lay down sod for grass, start flower beds. Just do small tasks, where, again, just 9 to 12 on this weekend, but to engage the community into doing more community service hours. I was looking at some stats before I got here about community service projects as a whole. Um, the state of Georgia ranks 42nd in the nation in community service projects. 40 seconds out of 50 states. It troubles me because we are the Bible Belt. We pride ourselves on being the faith community. But to be 42nd out the nation, I don't have to say a lot, I don't want to preach to the choir, but we have some work to do. And this is an opportunity for us to be living examples of putting our faith into action. I was blessed this weekend to attend United Holiness. There was a service on Saturday evening where the gentleman brought down the, the men of God, the women of God, to the front of the area. And he said for them to be living examples of your faith. I want for you to be living examples of what it means to praise and to worship. Because as the leaders of the church go, so will the rest of the community. So I want to say in closing, you guys are already doing a phenomenal job with your flock. There are a lot of souls that are getting saved. There are a lot of men and women that are getting closer to Jesus because of the work and stuff that you're doing. But as we know, he hasn't arrived yet. Salvation has not come yet. So we still know we got some work to do. So one of the things that we can do is initiate ourselves as a body of Christ to move forward as a unit and family. I'm thankful for this program because we brought together Habitat for Humanity and the Fuller Center to work together for a weekend in unity. 
Obviously, the world can see them as separate entities, but we decided here locally that we are in the same struggle because our mission is very simple. Every child deserves a simple, decent home to live. So when they sleep at night, they should have to worry about if the water's going to come through the roof. They should have to worry about if our lights are going to be on. They should have to worry about when I be in a, a space where there's like eight cousins sleeping in one room with me. That was a mission to charge a miller full of something very simple. Every child deserves a simple home. And I think you all would agree that if Christ provided, he said that if you believe in me, you should not be hungry. That part is taken care of. If you believe in me, you should not be thirsty. So he left us with a simple choice, is to build and to plant seeds. So what we're doing here today, and I have a sign-up sheet that I will pass around a little bit later on with the, with the program, but what I want to do is just encourage you guys to right now grab out a pen and a piece of paper, and I want to just make sure you write down October the 8th, 9th, and the 10th. I know the 10th is a Sunday, so some of you might have some church services activities going on, but just to save the day, because we already have a commitment from the college, the BCM at the college, to bring in 20 volunteers that weekend. So if the college students are ready to come out and show out, the community of God also has to come out and show out, all right? So again, I'm Brother Fredo. They call me the community Brother Fredo. And that just simply means that we are all free to do what we desire to do, as long as we do it with a God principle and a God focus. And that's why I'm here today. And if you guys have any questions, I'm going to stay around to the end. I also have business cards to pass out. If there are any other churches that are not represented here today, that you have a personal contact with, a personal relationship, I'm going to give you my card. Feel free to pass my number on to them. Feel free to pass my email address on to them. But also you can stop by the Fuller Center's office. We're right there where they say um, the Dragon Palace used to be at on the corner here in Americas. So when you're leaving Chevron, get your hot wings and your chicken. You might make a stop through just to see us. Um, and just stop in for a little bit to see what we have going on. We have multiple other programs. We're also organizing a group right now to go to Haiti to do some repair work and stuff for Haiti. So I always in closing, I always ask the, the men and women of God before leaving, just take the name of the Fuller Center of Housing Ministry into your spirit. Make sure that you pray for us. Make sure you pray for the work and stuff that we're doing. We're in 60 cities throughout the United States, as well as in 16 countries globally. Within a five-year span, all this has come together, but we know none of this would happen without the men and women of God actually taking the stands to improve their community and their neighborhood. All right, so again, I'm Brother Fredo. I encourage each and every one of you to embrace, to learn, to live and give like Christ Jesus in his humanity and his divinity. I want for you to activate your life, your community, and transform the world. So may God bless you.